Britain's political system is pretty goddamn weird. We're a country which calls itself a democracy, but we have hereditary peers who can influence our laws. We think of ourselves as a modern nation, but legislation requires royal assent. And as Labour MP Dawn Butler discovered this week, we have a House of Commons where you can lie with impunity, but you get kicked out if you call someone else a liar. Madam Deputy Speaker, poor people in our country have paid with their lives because the Prime Minister spent the last 18 months misleading this House and the country. Peter Stefanik from the CWU has over 27 million views on his online, and let me tell you some of them. He highlights that the Prime Minister said the economy has grown by 73%. It's just not true. Reinstated nurses bursary, just not true. There wasn't an app working anywhere in the world, just isn't true. Tories invested 34 billion in the NHS, not true. The Prime Minister said we have severed the link between infection and serious disease and death. Not only is this not true, Madam Deputy Speaker, but it is dangerous, and it's dangerous to line the pandemic. And I'm disappointed that the Prime Minister has not come to the House to correct the record and to correct the fact that he has lied to this House and the country over and over again. Order. order. I'm, I'm sure that the, um, the member will um, reflect on um, her words just saying, perhaps correct the record. Madam Deputy Speaker, what would you rather, a weakened leg or a severed leg? You know, at the end of the day, the Prime Minister has lied to this House time and time again. And it's funny that we get in trouble in this place for calling out the lie rather than the person lying. Order, order, order. Order. Can you re please, please reflect on your words and withdraw your remarks? Deputy Speaker, I've reflected on my words and somebody needs to tell the truth in this House that the Prime Minister has lied. Under the power given me by standing order number 43, I order the member to withdraw immediately from the House for the remainder of the day's sitting. I call Tom Randall. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. On perhaps a slightly lighter note, I hope... That was Dawn Butler getting ejected from Parliament for repeating things said by Boris Johnson in the Commons and pointing out they weren't true. I'm delighted to say Dawn joins me now. Um, thank you for joining us this evening. My, my first question for you, I mean, some of our audience, I imagine, will be surprised that you can get kicked out of Parliament for pointing out that what someone else said in Parliament wasn't true. Did it come as a surprise to you or were you, were you quite aware that what you said there was going to get you, you kicked out of the House of Commons? I knew that I was going to get kicked out. Um, I know that it's parliamentary protocol, um, but it's it spans back to a time that, you know, Parliament can be very um, antiquated. It's got all these old sort of traditions, and this is one of them. And it spans back to a time where uh, it was obviously a gentleman's club and people were quite honourable and you wouldn't dare lie to Parliament. You weren't allowed to call people... Um, a coward or a git or a, a gutter snipe, you know, I mean, gutter snipe, you know, things have changed a lot since those days. And I feel that it's really important that we highlight how Parliament works, but also the dangers of having somebody in power who doesn't tell the truth, because it leads to such corruption and we've seen that. I mean, all of this is very orchestrated, you know, all of this lying, all of this stopping our democracy from functioning has been uh, Boris Johnson's um, ammo from the very beginning. And that's because they saw an opportunity to be as corrupt as they possibly could. I mean, if this was happening anywhere else in the world, the UK would be sending overseers to go and have a look at corruption in other countries. They siphoned off so much money for their mates and left this country like poorer. We've had 130,000 people die from COVID. It's shocking really what's happened to our democracy over the last 18, 19 months. And do you think more MPs should do what what you did? Because on the one hand, obviously, it, it's harder to call Boris Johnson a liar because you might get kicked out of, of the House of Commons. On the other, what you said yesterday has got way more attention than it otherwise would because you broke this archaic 
code. So do you think more and more MPs should do a sort of I'm Spartacus thing and stand up and call Boris Johnson a liar until there's there's no one left in there? I think that would be amazing uh, if that happened, just, just so that it would force Boris Johnson, who is our prime minister, to tell the truth. I mean, how basic is it that we're asking the prime minister to stop lying? And the thing is, he drags everybody else with him, you know, saying that the scientists have said quite categorically that we have severed the link between the vaccines and death and hospitalization just isn't true. And it's a dangerous lie because it makes people act a certain way, feeling that they're completely completely protected when they are not. It's dangerous. You know, these lies are dangerous. It's not just about sort of embezzling money. You know, this is also people's lives that we're playing with. So um, it would be great if, you know, MPs did that. It's not an easy thing to do. It's it's quite nerve wracking. And, you know, when I was asked to leave and then um, I was then told I had to leave the building. I wasn't quite ready for that. So it wasn't an easy thing to do, but I'm glad I did it and I don't regret it because somebody needs to, to, to point out that the Prime Minister comes to Parliament and lies and nothing's done about it. But I can't say that he lies in the very place that he's lying. Why should I stick by the rules? I mean, this is, again, the ammo of this government. They expect us all to stick by the rules that they don't respect. You know, there was a time... If a minister was found guilty of bullying a civil servant, they would have to resign. Or if a minister was found canoodling in that, you know, in the office, they would resign. They would have their own self-respect to resign. None of that happens anymore. Nothing like that happens anymore. It's like all the rules have changed. We're living in this Alice in Wonderland, topsy turvy world. It makes no sense. And it's dangerous. The response to your your intervention on social media has been pretty overwhelming. Millions of views on, on the video. Lots of people surprised that you can get kicked out for, for saying you're lying. Lots of solidarity. What's the reaction been like in Parliament? And I suppose especially from your side, from from the Labour Party, have you got any, any messages of solidarity from, from Keir Starmer or anyone else on the front bench? Well, it's interesting to see, isn't it? It's interesting to see those who... Um are showing solidarity and support and those who, um, you know, are being obnoxious, uh, let's say, you know, on all sides of the house. I mean, I must say, like, the deputy speaker had no choice but to throw me out of parliament. You know, that's parliamentary protocol. So she had no choice to throw me out of, par uh, of parliament. And I'm, I'm cool with that. Um, you know, it would, you know, Michael, you know, I like to tell the truth. Um, it would be nice to have a bit more support, I'm not going to lie. Uh, but it's fine. At the end of the day, I, you know, put forward a new coronavirus bill highlighting the fact how authoritarian this government has become and how we can't afford for that to continue. I'm fighting uh, the government on um, the data grab that they're doing. And, you know, I'm working with lots of different people to do that. You know, Amnesty, Liberty, you know, the Good Law Project are doing absolutely phenomenal work. Um, Byline, you know, I'm working with lots of different people to, to highlight, you know, the, the dangers of this government. And that's fine. That's what the people, the good people of Brent, have elected me to do, and I will continue to to speak truth to power. That's what I'm here for. I'm not here for um, an easy ride. I'm I'm here to hold this government to account. I'm sure almost everyone in our audience loved watching you stand up there and call out Boris Johnson for what he is. And you know the fact that it got more coverage because you then got kicked out is is only a good thing. A cynic might suggest, or not. You don't have to be a cynic to suggest this, but the public doesn't seem to care that much that Boris Johnson is is lying. And so there will be some people who say, look, he might be a liar, but strategically pointing it out hasn't achieved much. So do we do we need to move on from calling Boris Johnson a liar? Or, or do you think that it, we just haven't tried hard enough? And, and if we do make a, an issue with the fact that he has a, a habit of telling untruths, that will, will ultimately um, end up being his downfall. 
So we know that it's baked in to the Boris Johnson brand, right? And people bake in the fact that he lies and they're like oh yeah well you know he's always lied you know he got sacked from being a journalist for making up quotes we know he lies you know he got sacked I think in 2004 when he was a junior minister for lying so people like sort of say oh well it's all baked in he's a liar um and it doesn't matter that much uh, to some but actually I think yesterday and the reaction has shown that there are a lot more people who actually um, don't approve of the fact that our prime minister is such a liar, that they can see the consequences of those lies, whether it be in the 130,000 people who have sadly died from COVID or whether it would be empty shelves in the supermarket. They can see that actually Boris Johnson's lies has consequences for all of us. I mean, we're not married to the guy, right? So thank God. So like, you know, if he wants to lie to his wife um, or his friends and family, yeah, that's his business. But he's in a position of power as the prime minister and he is lying to the country. And that's just not on. And I think people are like, well, actually, you need to stop lying um, or you need to step down as prime minister. And I think Peter... Um, uh, um, from the CWU has done a phenomenal job in sort of all of the research and ensuring that everything is fact-checked and just highlighting these lies. And it's quite interesting that what I said on the floor of the House yesterday has been fact-checked. The majority of what Boris Johnson has said is either, what did they say? Um, mistruths or not factual, something like that, you know, <laughs> also known as a lie. <laughs> you know, he is lying. And I just think eventually that's dropping with everybody and he can't get away from, with it forever, can he? Mm -hmm.